bonding versus fire. I have a question about bonding. This is from Rod Kurt 9273. Can copper clamps be used to do bonding? Or does it mean using thermite or fire melting uh, connection? This is fire welding. It actually welds the bonded rod with the ground rod and is considered the gold standard for doing that. You can also use TIG welding with copper if you want. A variety of ways that you can do it. You want a good solid connection. Another question, will adding additional ground rod space 15, 10 feet apart using a continuous copper wire help improve the efficiency or would it be unnecessary? The gold standard for amateur radio operators is this book. It's best practices for hams for grounding and bonding. Okay, yes, if you put those extra ground rods in, it'll make a more effective ground system. In fact, the book recommends that they be spaced a certain distance apart, like the length of two ground rods apart or 16 feet. Somewhere in there would be just fine. If you want to overdo that, that's fine. Ground rods, I guess, are about 20 or 30 bucks a piece. They're not solid copper, they're steel and they have a layer of copper plated onto it, okay? And because at RF, and even the frequencies that lightning produce, it's the copper that's going to do most of the conducting. So you want to get that down all eight feet into the ground. You can do that with just a little kind of uh, hole so that you've got the ground rod coming up in the minimum and it's level with the top, or you can leave a couple inches out like I do. Technically, it's supposed to be all the way down in the, in the bonding wires should be underground also. For bonding, I recommend number six, copper bare wire, which you can pick up at Home Depot. Number six is getting thick, number four is even thicker, number two is even better, but number six is what the, the book recommends. So there you go, 73.